All right, I would like to talk about vectors and uh, some vector inequalities that we mainly use in control systems. First of all, let's have some scalars and scalars. And when we form a vector, basically we put these scalars in a particular form x1 x2 all the way up to xn so this is simply called a vector and you can also take transpose of a vector which is we use the symbol t and basically this makes the above vector x1 x2 all the way up to xn when you have a vector like this, the above one, we call it its dimension Rn because it is con it contains n scalars. And if it is transposed like this, we call it 1 by n. And here R is nothing but the set of real numbers. Now, as this being defined, I would like to talk about inner product. Let's have two vectors x, x1 all the way up to xn, and y, y1 all the way up to yn. Inner product is shown as x, y, or simply x transpose y. And when you multiply these vectors with each other, we have basically x1 all the way up to xn multiplied by y1 all the way up to yn. So basically we have x1, y1 plus x2, y2 all the way up to xn, yn. And we can also show this using summation i equals to 1 to n xi yi. Alright, so these are the basic definitions about vectors, its transpose and inner product. Now, I would like to talk about norm, vector norms. So basically, in general, we define P norm of a vector S, XP, which is nothing but summation i equals to 1 to n, xi to the power of p, 1 over p. This is for p less than infinity. We also have infinity vector norm, which is the maximum i of the absolute value of an element. And this is for p equals to infinity. So you can have one norm, two norm, three norm, up to infinity norm. A spatial case, a spatial wildly used norm is two norm, x2, and which is i, 1 to n, xi to the power of 2, and its square root. You can also write this as square root of x transpose x, this spatial case is also called Euclidean No. All right, so these are the basic norm definitions that we commonly use. Now I would like to talk about triangle inequality. Inequality. Basically for any vector norm, x plus y, less than equal to x plus y. This holds for any vector norm, so this star can be 1 to infinity. Um, this uh, triangle inequality is uh, used in many places. Now, um, you can also use, consider other inequalities. For example, one famous one is Hölder inequality so let's say you have 
absolute value of x transpose y. Basically, it is upper bounded by x, p, and y, q. Now here, 1 plus p plus 1 plus q has to be 1. For example, you can consider its spatial case when p equals to q equals to 2. This is called Cauchy Schwartz inequality. In this case, we simply have x transpose y less than or equal to x2 y2, which is also a famous one. Um, now I would like to um, compare different vector norms with each other. For example, let's start with uh, one norm. So one norm, if you remember the definition of the p norm with p equals to one, is nothing but if you apply the definition, let's say you have two elements, it is x1 plus x2. If you, if you think about two dimension, right, let's say x1 has some positive number and x2 here has some positive number. It doesn't matter actually it's positive, positive or negative. You are taking the absolute value. So let's assume positive. Then basically it is summation, right? It's plus this shows the distance like you go first like this and then like this. Now instead if you took if you look at x2 norm, it is nothing but x1 to the power of 2 plus x2 to the power of 2 square root. Again I am applying the p norm definition with p equals to 2. In this case, if you look at the distance, right, x1 here, x2 here, basically it represents, um, if you draw like this, x1 and x2, it is nothing but the, by the, it shows this distance, x1 to the power of 2, x2 to the power of 2, right? With this being 90 degrees. So comparing this distance, x1 plus x2, versus this distance, certainly uh, two norm is less than one norm. You can also understand this by giving some numbers, right? Let's say x is 2 and 1 then basically x1 is 2 plus 1, which is 3. x2 is nothing but 2 to the power of 2, 1 to the power of 2 square root, which is square root of 5. And remember, you, you can also write 3 as square root of 9. So here, 2 norm is less than 1 norm. Similarly, if you look at this geometric example, this distance is longer than this distance. You can also generalize this to other norms. So on the equivalency between norms, in general, we can write x2 less than or equal to x1 here. And n, n is the number of the elements in a vector. So let's write it here. R, R to the power of n. So you can con you can basically convert two norm to one norm or one norm to two norm by satisfying these inequalities. Now about the infinity norm, you can write infinity less than or equal to x two less than or equal to square root of m x infinity. Uh, we can also include here x infinity less than or equal to x1, less than or equal to, in this case, n, x infinity. So if you combine them with each other, let's say the smallest one, x infinity, greater x2, x1, and this goes like this, n, 
nx2 and square root of nx2 and n x infinity so basically this is um, another important uh, property between vectors um, there you can also produce their geometric representations using their uh, definitions but in general this holds